Hey guys, meteorologist Chris Tomer here with this morning mountain weather update. My first stop, I want to talk about the Aurora Borealis. It was an incredible night for a lot of locations at low latitudes. This was a really strong event. Uh, a G4 event with an index, a KP index of about 8. So that brought that view line way to the south. I'll take you to my Twitter page here, and I want to show you this photo from Leo over the eastern plains of Colorado. Um, this is also with his uh, J10 uh, Twister replica uh, vehicle. I mean, it's just an awesome shot. You can see the color there in the sky. Uh, really nice composure. I mean, I've seen so many photos from Ohio across the Midwest to right here in Colorado. I mean, some of the photos from our mountains were really impressive, too. So you might be asking, okay, well, that was the view. The, the graphic on the left was the forecast for last night with an AKP index of about 8. So that brought that view line way to the south. Now, tonight into tomorrow is not as impressive. Some places, high northern latitudes and the northern tier of the United States could still see it, but the KP index drops to about 5 tonight, so it will be lower. Most of the weekend, it runs between 2, 3, 4, and 5, so it's much lower um, over the weekend. Not as good of a chance, in other words, of seeing it. All right, let me go to uh, water vapor satellite imagery here this morning, give you the lay of the land. So on this, your dry air is going to be in the oranges and the reds, and then everything else, the whites, the blues, that's going to be your moisture. So a little storm system right here. Now, I talked about this yesterday. It's going to run into the west, into dry air, into high pressure, and kind of get eaten alive. So that's not a big player. But this storm behind it is a big player. That's the one that will change, well, at least... Um, survive the trip into the uh, the Intermountain West and become an actual storm system around October 17th and 18th. So here's how that works. The jet stream is coddling this thing, and there's a little bit of a kink in the jet with this, but the whole thing, the flow continues to favor the northern tier. Now this storm kind of gets lost, but this is the one that will follow the flow and help to bring it down with jet stream support across the Intermountain West. So those are the two storm systems I'm watching in the forecast. That's all part of my bullet points this morning. Storm track right now favors BC, but then by 1017, 1018, um, that storm system comes in with um, rain and snow for the Intermountain West. Snow across a lot of the high peaks, and I'll show you that forecast coming up. And what the storm kind of does, uh, it kind of opens the door and allows potentially a slightly more active pattern across uh, the northern tier of states, uh, parts of the Intermountain West, in the extended forecast. So we'll look at all that in this update. But I want to take it to the time height forecast here for humidity in the atmosphere. This is Winter Park here in Colorado. Again, the time frame is you read it from right to left along the bottom. So it's just the opposite of what you would normally expect, but that's the way we do it. Um, so you're looking at humidity in the atmosphere all the way up through all the layers of the atmosphere at Winter Park. And it's a lot of dry air. There's a little bit of elevated humidity at the higher levels in green, and there's a little more pronounced green through the layers uh, by the time we get to Sunday afternoon and Monday. So that's how you would read that. And this, like I said, runs out to about 72 to 80 hours and from right to left. All right, and let me show you what happens here down the road. This is Jackson, Wyoming, snow forecast. Like I said, the pattern becomes more active after right around October 17th, 18th, and beyond. And you can see it here. This is the snow forecast for Jackson, Wyoming. Notice the bars ticking up and the average of these model runs saying, yeah, we're going to see some snow accumulation during that time period between October 17th and the 25th and 26th. So things do turn a little more active. I mean, after weeks and weeks of big high pressure with abnormally warm, dry temps. All right, let me show you the smoke forecast since we're here this morning. And here it is. So there's 24 hours in the future. There's 36 hours in the future. And I'll run this again. There's 48 hours into the future. You can see all the fires burning through uh, a lot of the Intermountain West. There's 24 hours into the future. There is 36 hours into the future. And there's 48 hours into the future. So you can see how things progress over the course of time. All right, let me take you back and show you how all this uh, moves within the atmosphere. Here's the jet stream forecast by close of business today. You can see the little bit of support coming through California for that tiny low. That's the one that's going to kind of get eaten up. Let me put this into uh, the motion here in the future. Into the future. Here's 1013. There's 1014. Everything's running up into BC, but here's the change. Look at the kink. Here comes the storm system. There's 1017, 1018. That storm system runs through Utah, Colorado, Wyoming, and then out. 
but it does tend to open the door for potentially a little lower setup of the jet stream, a little further south. So that is something to watch. Okay, let me show you the forecast radar and satellite. Here we are today at 530. You notice in California, here comes that little storm system. A little bit of precip survives, but then it dries up and it's just gone. Here's 1014 in the morning. Uh, you can see the precip up in BC. Here comes our storm system. Look at it, 1016, 1017, some snow for the inner mountain. Not talking incredibly heavy, but at least it's something. Look at the Pacific Northwest. Notice that active flow up there continuing. So again, it does open the door slightly. I mean, we're not talking about a huge pattern change here, but definitely something here uh, versus where we've been the last 10 to 20 days. Okay, snow forecast. Looks like this. Again, nothing incredibly heavy, but a little something for the lower 48 in Colorado, maybe a little bit over the high Uintas, the Tetons, parts of Montana, Idaho, uh, the Pacific Northwest, and certainly some snow up in BC at the highest of elevation. So we are talking about something now. And again, it all comes down to this. It's what happens down the road with um, the opening of the door. That's Jackson, Wyoming, and the snow chances starting to increase after a long dry stretch this fall. All right, guys, thanks for tuning in here. Always appreciate it. Take care and have a great Friday.